prison for the man accused of setting a fire in which two firefighters died. Now this. Hi, I'm Pam Patrick, Miss Iowa, USA. Cheer for me as I compete for the 1992 Miss USA crown on TV8. Weather forecast partly cloudy and colder. Highs tomorrow in the 30s. Highs Saturday in the 20s. Back to the 30s on Sunday. Now to CBS. A National Guard plane crashes into an Indiana restaurant. We'll have the latest on the investigation. Thousands of American homeowners try to refinance, but many find the deal is not all it's cracked up to be. And the story of a courageous young man who had both arms reattached after losing them in a farming accident. This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening, Dan Rather reporting. A big military transport plane crashed and burned today on a training flight in Evansville, Indiana. The Lockheed C-130 plowed into a restaurant and hotel. At least 16 people died, including the plane's five-member crew. Correspondent Bob Fall is on the scene in Evansville near the Kentucky border. Another few feet, another few seconds, and the Kentucky Air National Guard plane might have been able to land in an open field nearby. The tragedy could have been much less. Instead, the huge military transport, with more than 5,000 gallons of fuel, barely cleared some power lines, then dropped like a stone, one wing slamming into the roof of a four-story hotel, the fuselage crashing into a parking lot below, then plowing into the kitchen of a JoJo's restaurant at the end of the lot. Said one eyewitness, it was the worst sounding earthquake you have ever heard. It felt like an earthquake as the station was shaking and whatnot. And uh, we went out front here, and then all of a sudden I heard somebody yell, plane crash. The plane had four engines, and several eyewitnesses said they heard sputtering, spitting noises. In the hotel, nine died almost instantly, scorched when fuel sprayed forth and was ignited in a fireball of explosion. Everything was, you know, like a ball of fire over there and smoke, so we... My first reaction was to run over there, see if I could help, but once we got across the street, it was so hot, you know, we had to come back. The plane, with its crew of five Kentucky Air National Guardsmen, had just been ordered back to its base outside Louisville to pick up another crew and head to Florida. And this morning, the C-130 had been practicing touch-and-go landings, setting down, then lifting off just a few seconds later, a procedure that Kentucky Air National Guard officials call necessary but risky. Uh, it's necessary, and, and it's a... Uh, a uh, risky uh, business in, in any military occupation, the same as the police. Uh, so it's just one of those things you, you have to do. Dan, there is a cockpit voice recorder. It has not yet been retrieved from a plane which is generally considered both a workhorse and extremely safe. That's what's so baffling, one Kentucky Air National Guardsman says. We just don't know why the plane would fall like it did. He was asked, is there any sign of mechanical failure? He replied, only a deep hope in my heart that it was. Dan? Bob Evansville is a comparatively small city, but this is not the first time it suffered the air disaster tragedy. No, back in 1977, a very cold December day, the basketball team of the Evansville University basketball team went down. The Purple Aces wiped out the program set back for five years. In a small airport, people are saying, look, two tragedies in a short period of time. We don't need that, obviously, but this is an area that's built up. There's a huge Westinghouse plant nearby. Why was the military conducting this kind of procedure there, saying the military's response, this was a routine procedure practiced by every pilot in every airport in America, nothing out of the ordinary. Bob Fall, thanks. Out campaigning for re-election, President Bush made it official today. He rejects national health insurance. He rejects the idea of requiring employers to help employees pay for more health insurance. Mr. Bush put out what he is for at a campaign photo opportunity in Cleveland, Ohio. We need common sense, comprehensive health care reform. And we need it now. And my plan, I really believe, is the right plan. A plan that meets our obligation to all Americans by putting hope and health within their reach. The president said his plan would cost about $100 billion over the next five years. It would provide tax credits and deductions the president says millions of poor and middle-income Americans would get some help to pay for health insurance 
up to, in some cases, $3,750 per family per year. Mr. Bush did not propose any national health insurance, nor did he propose any mandatory health insurance by employers. The president also did not spell out how to pay for his plan. He sent Congress 38 pages of options. Democrats have spent months trying to make an issue out of the lack of affordable health care for everybody, and they proposed some plans of their own. From New Hampshire now, Richard Threlkel reports how all this plays on the campaign trail and in the emergency room. Every year, Elliott Hospital in Manchester spends more than a million dollars treating people who get sick and don't have health insurance. Michelle Morin is just one of 35 million Americans who are uninsured. I know that I can't pay the bill. What am I supposed to do? What if it's something, you know, that I need to have, like, more medicine than you can get at the store? New Hampshire's economy is in serious condition, so the Democratic presidential candidates have been listening to voters tell them where it hurts. She has no health insurance. What are we going to do? And it's not surprising the Democrats regard the president's new health insurance proposal as, well, anemic. I'm for national health insurance. Bob Kerry supports federally funded insurance and thinks the Bush plan would penalize the poor and elderly. George Bush is, is opposed to doing anything that will have him confront his golfing buddies in, in the insurance industry. Bill Clinton would require employers to cover their workers or pay into a fund to cover the uninsured, the so-called pay or play option. He says Mr. Bush's reform is too timid. I think it is pouring more money into a broken system. You're still not going to have universal coverage. There are no cost controls in the program. While the politicians spar over specifics, people like Diane Gagnon are waiting. She has cancer, she's lost her job, she's run out of insurance, and now faces six months of chemotherapy. It really is kind of scary. I mean, even though I, you know, I believe in God and everything, but and I think I'll pull through this somehow. I know I'll get better and everything, but it's just the money situation. Today marks the beginning of a national health insurance debate that will last well beyond the November election. A week from next Tuesday, New Hampshire voters will be the first to decide, among a lot of other things, whose prescription Americans prefer. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, Manchester. This is John Blackstone in California. Politicians aren't the only ones taking heat on health care. Billboards going up in Sacramento target employers. It's part of an advertising campaign that may soon start making bosses angry across the country. Listen to the radio spot. My boss would rather hire a maid, buy a yacht and sail around the world, or join a country club than invest in his employees. The campaign is sponsored by the Electrical Workers Union, the IBEW, and by some bosses who do provide health insurance. People ask a lot of their employees, and I think providing securities for health benefits is something that uh, is a benefit of not only my employees, but the community also. The advertising agency was given clear instructions. Shock Sacramento, go out there and uh, shake people up, place some guilt where guilt belongs, and get people to ask why they don't have medical coverage. The ads have not only shocked, they have angered. Kathy Patrick runs an accountancy firm. I mean, the first thing I thought of is, I don't have the mansion or the yacht, and I'm not frivolously spending those profits. Patrick does provide health insurance for her employees, but she says many small companies simply can't afford it. Mandatory uh, health insurance, I believe, would put them out of business. The ad campaign has created enough response in Sacramento that its sponsors are making plans to take it to other cities. Many more bosses better prepare themselves to be offended. John Blackstone, CBS News, Sacramento. Still ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, America's homeowners in a scramble to save thousands of dollars and 40 years on the throne. Is it time for Queen Elizabeth to step down? There's constipation, and there's constipation. Oh, yeah. When it's this bad, take it to the max. New Maximum Relief Formula X-Lax Pills with 50% more X-Lax Medicine. For maximum relief, oh, yeah. take it to the max. I've got the flu and I ache, but I don't take aspirin anymore or Tylenol. I choose Advil. Advil stops my headache, reduces fever, and relieves the aches. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. There's lots of ways to have garlic. The quiet difference is the consistency of garlic qualities of this easy-to-swallow tablet. There's no better way to have garlic than odor-free quai. I've heard a lot about garlic. Quai is odor-free and so easy to swallow. 
Quai is available at quality drug stores, health and natural food stores, and general nutrition centers. It's the best, and it's odor free. Quai, science and nature working for you. New figures give more evidence of just how badly U.S. automakers fared last year. Chrysler said today it lost $665 million for the year. GM and Ford have not yet reported their results, but already analysts say 1991 was the worst year ever for the U.S. auto industry. With the recession on and an election campaign well underway, low interest rates are giving homeowners the best break they've had in years. Thousands are trading in their mortgages for new loans at lower rates. James Satori looks at this rush to refinance in tonight's report on the money crunch, making it in America. What type of loan are you looking for? Inquiries about falling interest rates have jammed phone lines at mortgage companies across the United States. So far this year, homeowner refinancing is up more than 500% over 1991. Are you looking for a fixed rate mortgage or are you looking for an adjustable rate? Our daily phone volume is between seven and 10,000 calls a day. Tim and Georgia Landauer put their signatures on the dotted line this morning. Their six-year-old mortgage was at 12%. The latest 30-year loan rates average 8.7%. We locked in at this rate. It's uh, about the best it's going to get, I think. But locking in a rate may be tough. Some offices are just too backed up. Well, at the moment, sir, we're not doing any refinancing until probably after the 1st of March. In mortgage lingo, it's a frenzy of points and arms and caps. They're going to pay us 1.25 at 7.875 at 180 months. The least amount of money that we've saved someone is probably $150 a month. But qualifying can be a problem, especially for homeowners whose property values have dropped sharply. They may owe too much to get a new loan. And refinancing isn't cheap. It often means hiring an appraiser and a surveyor on top of fees for applying and closing. So you're looking at some closing costs, again, of what I was looking at when I first bought the home, which is almost, uh, you know, four or $5,000. Experts say the refinancing shuffle may slow later this year if rates rise. Still, we think we're going to have about 3 million homeowners refinance their mortgage. Savings from refinancing could total $6 billion this year. A windfall to homeowners and a modest boost to a struggling economy. James Vittori, CBS News, Dallas. Stay here with us now for more news, including a new weapon in the fight against the nation's number one killer, heart disease. Instead of tossing and turning, try Unisom. In medical tests, people fell asleep faster and slept better with Unisom than without. I was sleeping and sleeping, sleeping and sleeping all night. Take Unisom for faster, better sleep. So I'm in the grocery store and this really good looking guy smiles at me and says, Hi. Hi. Kellogg's Reflex? Oh. Um, well, these aren't mine. Uh, my folks are visiting. He didn't have to be embarrassed. I love Kellogg's Bran Flakes. They have this nutty toasted wheat taste that is really great. Anyway, I grab a box of Kellogg's Bran Flakes and say, Gee, that's too bad. I was going to compliment your good taste. <laughs> the toasted taste of Kellogg's Bran Flakes. They're not what you expect. I'd like to talk to you about an invisible problem. The invisible bacteria that cause denture odor. Fortunately, antibacterial effident kills those odor-causing bacteria for clean, fresh dentures. Antibacterial effident. Now's the time for Centrum Silver. Because you're over 50 and you're out there swinging. Centrum Silver, a complete vitamin formula for your changing nutritional needs. Centrum Silver, it's a great time to be silver. I'm Harry Smith. And I'm Mark McEwen. What would you say if we told you this tree had a secret ingredient to cure some types of cancer? We'll tell you more tomorrow on CBS This Morning. It's breakfast in your head. New government figures show the U.S. infant death rate has hit a new low. Fewer than 10 deaths for every 1,000 children born in America. But the death rate for black infants was still more than twice as high as whites. And many other countries still have much lower infant mortality rates than we do. Japan has the lowest, about half, the U.S. rate. The FDA saw the light today 
the laser light. It approved the first laser device to clear the clogged arteries of some people at high risk for heart attacks. Health correspondent Edie Magnus has the story. Edie, what are the details? Dan, laser technology remains controversial. However, the makers of the eczema laser device say it is an effective alternative for people with extremely serious blockages in their arteries, people for whom conventional balloon angioplasty procedures may not work. It's those difficult cases that balloons have a tough time with uh, where, where we're most important. By difficult, he means long. When plaque buildups in the arteries to the heart exceed 20 millimeters or more, balloons, says Wall, can't effectively clear the blockage. With the new laser device, a catheter is inserted into the clogged artery and a cold laser beam is shot through, vaporizing the plaque, theoretically causing less trauma to the artery walls than a balloon. We are not saying that it should be used as a first choice for all types of lesions, but lesions that are difficult to do with balloons. The new device is not without critics. Some cardiologists say there's not enough evidence that it is more effective than balloon angioplasty. Some noted in a recent medical journal, the ultraviolet laser beam may cause cancer. Being in the sun in California, in our state, uh, for 30 minutes is about the same risk of, of generating cancer. And people are in the sun all the time. So that it, it, is, a, it is a scientific possibility, but not a risk, not a major risk. Whether a person has laser angioplasty or balloon angioplasty, and there are around 200,000 of those done each year, chances that the arteries will re-clog are about the same. But they both represent a cheaper alternative to bypass surgery, about $4,000 compared to $40,000. Dan? Help from the lasers. Thanks, Edie. In this land of medical marvels, another kind of medical marvel today, living proof of a wounded teenager's courage and determination and a surgical team's skill. Regina Blakely has our report on that. Three weeks after losing both his arms in a farming accident, 18-year-old John Thompson was still keeping cool under pressure. It's the same attitude doctors say kept him alive during a nightmare most of us couldn't imagine living through. Well, I think they really have borne it out of proportion in that, you know, air, I think everybody would have done the same thing. Thompson was working alone on his family farm in North Dakota, filling grain bins, when he slipped on ice and fell onto a spinning and shaft. When he lost his balance, he must have caught his shirt a little bit on this here, and he reached back to grab his shirt out, and it caught his arms and flipped him around and around. The machine took off both arms, but incredibly, the injured boy struggled to his feet, then ran to the house, opened one door with his mouth, kicked in another, and then clenched a pencil in his teeth to call for help. Yeah, I knew I had to go to the house where I bled to death. So I ran to the house where I went and called my cousin. He said, my arms are gone, I can't feel them. Yeah, I, can, I can wave to you. Yeah. After delicate surgery to reattach the limbs, John can now move his arms, but has no feeling below the elbows. I believe in miracles, I, and with all the support and the, the people behind us and, and the Almighty himself, hey, I'm I'm going all the way, so is John. Donations and cards and letters from around the world. Oh, here's one from Japan. Have overwhelmed this tiny North Dakota town. I just like to say thanks a lot. It really means a lot to me. John now faces years of physical therapy, but given his will to survive, there may well be more miracles to come. Regina Blakely, CBS News, Minneapolis. What a story. Coming up next, Eye on America. Tonight, a report from the combat zone we've allowed some of our schools to become. Where do you want to be in 10 years? Detroit to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Detroit. That's not why I became a pilot. I'll tell you the run I want. St. Thomas to Saba Island. To my own Grumman Mallet. Call it Dave's Airways. That's what I want for my investments. Now, how do we do it? You can get there from here with Shearson Lehman Brothers. As a registered dietitian, I bet you don't get enough fiber every day. I also bet you think high fiber cereals don't taste good. Well, here's one that does. Fruit and fiber. It's the only high fiber cereal with this delicious combination of crispy bran flakes, fruit, nuts, and crunchy oat clusters. Mmm. Try fruit and fiber, and I bet you'll be eating more fiber and liking it. 
Post Fruit and Fiber Cereal, the great tasting way to get high fiber every day. <coughs> that cough sounds awful. Come home. When you have to doctor a bad cough, reach for new Robitussin Maximum Strength Cough from the brand more doctors and pharmacists recommend. It lasts up to eight hours, and you can't buy a stronger cough medicine without a prescription. I'm glad to see you. This'll help. New Robitussin Maximum Strength Cough. Big relief for your worst coughs. Who's favorite to get the medals? Which American should skate, ski, and luge away with the gold? The Olympic Winter Games Preview, tonight on CBS. Years ago, in American cities, a public school was considered a refuge from the mean streets, and a teacher was a figure of respect and authority. Not anymore. Some of today's students have brought the values and the weapons of the street right into the classroom, and in many schools, the teacher is the target. Correspondent Harold Dow looks at a hazardous profession in tonight's Eye on America. It's something that we begin to face now that wasn't in my job description when I started. Uh, you expect a fireman or police officer to lose his life while on duty. The last thing you expected was for a teacher to do that. Michael Grant, a 20-year New York City teaching veteran, escaped with his life recently, but his career may be over. He was injured when he tried to escort an intruder out of his school building. The youth allegedly turned and dropped an explosive at the science teacher's feet. They believe it was an M80. Uh, an M80 is an explosive device equal to about a quarter stick of dynamite. And uh, the next thing I remember was the ambulance. Can you think of a real life situation? They had been somehow exempt from violence. Their schools, sanctuary from the streets. But increasingly, teachers tell us they too have become fair game for the children who bring weapons to school. In Texas, police say this student brought his gun to school and started shooting. Dallas school officials have installed metal detectors and say on the average they confiscate a gun a day. But they didn't detect this student's gun. And in Providence, Rhode Island, Vice Principal Michael Ruggiero now goes to physical therapy three days a week after being attacked by one of his students. He pushed me to the ground and when I was down he started to punch me four or five times. Having a husband who was an educator, I would never have to think that I would have to worry about his physical well-being when he leaves to go to work every day. A recent government survey by the Department of Education has estimated that 15% of all urban teachers have been physically threatened and that 3% of them have been attacked. So teachers and their unions are now making school safety a top priority. Uh, do you have problems in breaking up fights among yes, kids and teachers lot. getting hurt? Yes, and a lot. Ed Muir works for the teachers union in New York. He travels to different schools each day to hear about attacks against teachers. What's the general feeling among the, uh, the, the teacher population? Well, they're frightened. Uh, when you approach a kid in the hall, uh, you're going to have that little fear in the back of your mind. Is this kid carrying? Teachers never had to worry about such things before. We met teacher Robin Persley just moments after she was shoved by a student. It's getting worse. The school is overcrowded. The children just don't care. They act the same way on, in school as they do on the streets. Suppose you have a problem with the, with the teacher, and then you don't like what that teacher is doing. I think we should talk it out. These students are learning a different way. They are part of a New York schools program called Resolving Conflict Creatively. John, what could you have done differently to, to prevent the problem? They have been taught the skills of mediation. As part of their curriculum, they learn how to break up fights and prevent violence against teachers and themselves. We are sisters and brothers. The children learn songs and skills of peace, but for many teachers, it's already too late. In New York City, veteran school teacher Audrey Chasen was buried last week after having been caught in the crossfire, a gunfight that erupted across the street from her Bronx school. We're at a very severe crossroads in the profession. Uh, things that happened today would have never happened 10 years ago. Uh, I regret that guns have become school supplies, and it's a tragedy. The greatest tragedy may be with the teachers left alive, those who choose not to teach anymore. 
Michael Grant can't decide if he'll ever teach again. I was never afraid. Afraid to walk into my own school? Are you kidding me? No. But now you now are. Now I am. Harold Dow, CBS News, New York. that can be replaced with a non-flammable solvent? In 1929, she was the only woman and the only PhD chemist in the physics lab. But over the years, she was responsible for 29 different patents. Hello, I'm Sylvia Stacer. Dr. Stacer created a new career path for women and for her company. The same company that leads the nation in patents granted to women over the last decade. We think Dr. Stacer would be pleased. Dow lets you do great things. Every Twelve dollars for every mile over the limit. That's three hundred bucks. You can add fast too. Next. To send someone money fast, call one eight hundred Call Cash or come to any Western Union location. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. Here's a sweet idea for breakfast. Try Sunsweet Prune Juice for a change. Mm, it's naturally sweet and delicious. Sunsweet Prune Juice adds no sugar. It's perfect just the way it is. Remind you of anyone? Not really. <laughs> Now, you can ask Angela Lansbury about Bufferin. Angela, you said on TV that Bufferin's effective pain relief. Is it really strong aspirin? I'll say it is. Extra strength Bufferin's the strongest dose of aspirin you can buy. 1,000 milligrams. Angela, how can Bufferin be so strong if it has buffers? That's a good question. I've learned the buffers don't weaken it. They just help prevent aspirin stomach upset. Bufferin's great pain relief. Shouldn't you discover the strength of Bufferin? If you're looking to maintain regularity, look here. There's a drug-free way to do it. And Kellogg's All Brand can be an important part. Because a high-fiber diet, including Kellogg's All Brand, can give you the fiber you need for drug-free regularity. See the recipe on the box for another way to enjoy Kellogg's All Brand. All Brand muffins. All that fiber. All that great taste. Finally tonight, 40 years in the same job would seem to call for some sort of celebration. But for Britain's Queen Elizabeth, today was just another day of what she calls her job for life. Tom Fenton in London has a portrait of a monarch. The British saw their queen in a rare documentary today, and she looked as if she were running for office. It was a vigorous, active woman they saw. The country is saluting her 40 years on the throne today. But some think it's time she stepped down in favor of Prince Charles. And I'm not sure she has a mind or the will to do the reforms that need to be done to modernize the monarchy. The most frequent criticism is that one of the richest women in the world does not pay a penny of taxes. Others object to the tabloid lifestyles of the younger royals. Fergie's alleged affair with a Texas millionaire dies a $130,000 foreign car. Despite the criticism, the Queen is part of the national psyche. One of the most striking illustrations is the number of people who report having dreams about the Queen, a third of the population according to a survey, and half the dreams involve having tea. Morning. Morning. The Queen went about her royal rounds today seemingly oblivious to any controversy. <laughs> and you have stopped. <laughs> well, that's that's not smart, isn't it? The message from the palace is that the British have a queen who still has a lot of mileage in her, and she intends to be queen for life. Uh, many congratulations. Thank you very much. What do I get? Well, <laughs> you get 16 pounds. 16 pounds? 16 pounds. You're winning. <laughs> Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. Tea with the Queen, part of our world tonight. Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. See you tomorrow. Good night. This is CBS. Next on the TV8 News, live at 6, we'll go live via satellite to Indiana, where a military plane crash has taken 16 lives. From cops to lawmakers, people are talking about how to stop hate crimes. I'm Dana Card, and I'll have an update on the Joel Larson murder. 
Also tonight, Steve Carlin is on the slopes with Iowans in Colorado, beginning his series called Downhill Thrill. Connie's colder forecast and Heidi with the Valley High School basketball star. TV8 News is next. Want home cooking? Look no more. See what the machine shed has in store. There's juicy pork with plenty of stuff and thick Iowa steak, and that ain't nothing. From hearty breakfast right through dinner, the machine shed is a first-class winner. Besides great food, the shed is fun. There's smiles and laughter for everyone. Come on in. No need to roam. The Iowa machine shed is your home away from home. Look at these red marks. These old glasses do nothing but pinch. They're a pain. You don't have to put up with glasses that don't fit anymore. Now Lens Crafters brings you better fit for greater comfort. Lens Crafters glasses fit your snug points with features like new self-adjusting snug fit pads that flex to gently and securely hug your nose. No more pinching. I never knew glasses could be this comfortable. Lens Crafters. Better fit for greater comfort. In about an hour. The people of Los Angeles appeal to soybean farmers everywhere. Did you know velvet leaf could actually wipe out the soybean crop? That's right. No soybeans, no tofu. Millions of Californians are counting on you and command. Thank you for watching KCCI, TV8 in Des Moines. And now from TV8, Iowa's news leader, Paul Rhodes. Kevin Cooney, Connie McBurney with weather, and Heidi Soliday Sports. This is TV8 News, live at 6. Good evening, thanks for being with us. I'm Sue Mason. Kevin is on assignment. Eleven victims inside a motel and restaurant never knew what hit them. They're among 16 persons killed today when a military transport plane crashed into a commercial area near the airport in Evansville, Indiana. For the latest on the crash, here's Cheryl Case, live via satellite from Evansville. Cheryl? The latest that we have right now just came from a press conference a few minutes ago by military officials. They have told us that the coroner here in Vanderburg County is now tagging the bodies and remains of the victims killed in this crash. Confirmation as of yet is still 16. Two people killed in the restaurant, nine people killed in the hotel, and five crew members on board the aircraft. We don't know exactly what caused this crash. Military officials are keeping a tight lid on what they've learned from their investigation so far. What we have been told from General Berthold, I am told, is that the military officials have been able to get a hold of some sketches of the plane. They've picked up a few pieces here and there. They have not been able to recover the flight recorder. The pieces that they have been able to recover, they are going to try to sketch out and map out a detailed plan and try to figure out what happened to this aircraft. What we were told from witnesses today is that the plane just seemed to literally come out of nowhere and then literally drop straight down from the sky. Big balls of fire just came spewing out. The plane itself looked like a big fireball and very little of it is left. You can see very little. Apparently the plane just began to disintegrate with the high amount of fuel that was in it. Investigators say this investigation could take several days. They're obviously planning on a long night this evening. They've set up floodlights so that they can continue to inspect the accident site here tonight. They say they're not going to give us any more press conferences. Whether or not that will change, we will have to stay in tune with you. Is it possible there are more victims in the ruins? There is a possibility. The Red Cross has set up a center here at the New uh, CK Newsom Center in Evansville for people to call in with information. They particularly want employees of the Drury Inn and JoJo's restaurant, the two sites that were damaged in this accident, for those employees who were not scheduled to work today to call in so that they can be accounted for because there are some people they just have not been able to find and they don't know yet if they were actually here at the time of the crash. So once they get everyone accounted for, they will be able to assess more as to the number of casualties in this tragic accident. Thank you, Cheryl Chase. In other news tonight, that letter from a Minneapolis hate group claiming to have murdered a former Urbandale man is prompting a call for action here in Iowa. The letter comes on the heels of cross burnings and racial unrest in Dubuque. And it comes at a time Iowa law officials are meeting in Des Moines to learn more about hate crimes. TV8's Dana Carden is in the newsroom with an update. Dana. Well, Sue, no one knows for sure yet if that letter from the group calling itself the AIDS Commission is for real or just a cruel hoax. 
The letter claims the group killed 21-year-old Joel Larson to push gays back into the closet. Hate crime experts say that letter is a classic example of hate group tactics. And talk today from cops to lawmakers was how to combat such crime here in Iowa. What's the response from the media? What's the response from the police? What's the response from the community? And if there's nothing there, it escalates. And it goes up and up until eventually someone gets killed. That's the message that Lieutenant William Johnston was trying to get across to these Iowa law officers. Hate crimes affect the entire community, he says, and the entire community needs to respond. Johnston, who heads a hate crimes unit for the Boston Police Department, says hate crimes against gays are especially difficult to stop because gays are afraid to come forward, fearing more discrimination. I've yet to have an Asian say, my God, I can't go to court with you because my employee's going to find out I'm an Asian, I'm going to lose my job. Or Hispanic say, I'll lose my apartment if my landlord finds out. That's why Iowa Senator Elaine Zimoniak is going to introduce a bill in the next week that would ensure civil rights for gays and lesbians, protecting them in employment and housing. Supporters say just strengthening the hate crime law alone would not be enough. We're never going to get crimes against gay and lesbian people under control until we totally protect the civil rights of gay and lesbian people. Current and Zimoniak say it's too close to call whether such a law would pass this year, but even if it did, it would face a veto threat by Governor Branstad. A spokesman today says the governor is concerned that adding sexual orientation to civil rights law would create a protected class that could lead to businesses being required to hire gays to fill quotas. Any kind of discrimination uh, against any group is wrong, and, and as governor of this state, I think he, he should know that it's all people about whom he has to be concerned. Five states already have enacted civil rights laws for gays, as have more than 50 cities nationwide, including Ames and Iowa City. Polls show a majority of Iowans favor such a law. Okay, Dana, what's the latest on the investigation into the murder of Joel Larson? Well, Sue, uh, Minneapolis police are working right now to determine the authenticity of that hate letter, and here in Des Moines, Friends of Larson have set up an education and memorial fund in Larson's honor. Okay, thank you. Dana Carden reporting live for us. Convicted arsonist Dale Ryan continues to proclaim his innocence. Ryan today sentenced to 27 years in prison, accused of setting the Burlington Health Club fire more than two years ago. Two volunteer firefighters died in that blaze. Before he was sentenced today, Dale Ryan told a federal judge, as God is my witness, I am not an arsonist. Relatives of one of the victims say they are satisfied with the prison sentence. And still he's going to be 60 years plus when he gets out, so the best years of his life are going to be taken from him just like he took from my brother. No, it's not over. I mean, it's not a day go by and I don't think about it anyway, that night, you know, the fire. Um, it's not over. It won't ever be over for me. I mean, he took two young lives plus little children were left and lots of grieving brothers and sisters who are still trying to deal with this. Ryan's attorneys say they will appeal the sentence. Authorities say a winter set church fire started in the furnace room of the basement. Yesterday morning's fire destroyed much of the century-old First Baptist Church. Damage is now estimated at $700,000. Today fire investigators said they don't have a cause of the fire but say the blaze started in the furnace room of the old church. It took nine fire departments four hours to control the fire. Tonight, church spokesmen say this Sunday's services will be held at the Winterset High School. West Des Moines police have released this photo of the suspect in yesterday's bank robbery at First Bank on 5th Street. The suspect, armed with a knife, made off with an undetermined amount of money. She's described as in her early 30s, 5'2", 120 to 130 pounds, light brown hair. If you have any information, you ask to call West Des Moines police. Senator Tom Harkin may be trailing in New Hampshire, but the latest TV8 poll shows Harkin like a, looking like a winner in his home state. The survey taken this week shows Harkin with a big lead among Democrats likely to go next Monday's Iowa caucuses. Harkin with 73%, no other Democrat, above single digits. And for the first time, the survey says if Tom Her Harkin were the Democratic nominee for president, he would defeat George Bush in Iowa. Harkin with a four-point lead. Last June, Harkin trailed Bush by 26 points in Iowa. The survey done by Political Media Research has a margin for error of 4.5%. Well, Connie McBurney says the dry weather continues. Connie?
certainly did. A big cold air mass moved in last night, but no moisture with it again. In fact, it came on some very gusty northwesterly winds. Tonight's low temperatures, however, are only a rehearsal for tomorrow night. Just remember that this is only February. Normal low temperatures are in the lower teens. More weather later in the news. All right. Thank you. And next on the TV8 News, health screening may have saved the life of a Drake athlete. Jill Lingwall with her story. And Steve Carlin will take us downhill for a thrill or two. His special reports begin from Colorado when we come back. Both serious tonight's divers go for the gold quiz questions. 